Hi there, this is Jeff with Sound and Light Technicians. Uh, I wanted to go over uh, one of these self-powered speakers, the JBL Eon G2. It's the 15-inch uh, version. And I wanted to go over a little bit about it, this. We've been having a lot of debate on the uh, passive versus active. You know, passive is a non-powered speaker, active is a powered speaker. And we've had some interesting debate on the two different types of speakers. Uh, I get some hate mail because I personally am not a uh, powered speaker fan. Um, but right now, this particular speaker, the JBL G2, uh, so far this year, this is my favorite uh, cell powered speaker. And the reason is, I have done over 13 of these in the last two months where I've had to go into nightclubs, find them not working, pull them down, uh, have them repaired, and uh, go back in there and set them up and refly them. So uh, right now I have actually made more money off these speakers than I have any other speakers so far this year. So right now I'm kind of a fan of these as far as uh, for my business. Would I own these? Yeah, you can guess that one for yourself. Now, I'm not particularly slamming JBL, but I will uh, talk about it a little bit. Uh, right here you can see the uh, the back. This is all like a cast pop metal uh, I thought it was aluminum. It could be an aluminum case, uh, but it's kind of hard to tell. It's pretty rough, but it's probably kind of a pop metal type aluminum basket type thing. Uh, you got your power supply down here. You've got your uh, connections here for the speaker. Uh, the wiring between here and the cone has been a problem. I've actually had uh, uh, <laughs> most of them. These wires are completely cooked and burnt open. Uh, you've got your other wiring for your amplifier and everything else that uh, plugs in here. you got your LED, a little blue LED on the front. There's your cone. There's your base ports. And again, there's your power supply. In the back of the box here, it sits up like this. It's tall. So the box sits up like this. You've got, this is your power input. I've already robbed the input amp to try to fix another one of the speakers. This one is beyond repair, so this thing just has to be replaced. Uh, but everything was failed on this thing, and, and it could not be fixed in for what it cost to actually replace the speaker. So uh, right here is the input uh, amplifier uh, for the where you get your low and your mid, and or your low and your high, and your gain, and everything else. Um, inside here, this is all plastic box. They've got basically camper tape that goes around the side to keep it from rattling. Uh, you've got a basic nut type zert, just a, like a nut and a washer back here, and that's what the back screws, if you're going to mount a plate on, that's what these screw into as they go into those nuts. It's got a nice little cable routing if it happens to go flat against a plate or a wall. It's tippable. You can tip it up and you can use it as a monitor, but unfortunately the cone goes the wrong direction for a monitor. It should actually turn the other way. You want a uh, cone that goes vertical, uh, not horizontal. So that is the case. Now, uh, I've talked about the amplifiers and everything else on these speakers, and this is one thing I want to cover. Okay, This is the amplifier. All right. Now when you see a big old amplifier that you're running things with, uh, it's it's huge. It's massive. Okay. Now this amplifier itself, I'm going to pin over here to give you a, a idea. This is a little Sharpie. Okay. These things aren't very big. Okay. Right there. The Sharpie is actually longer than the circuit board and gives you an idea here how wide the circuit board is. I mean, it's each section, is, I mean, that's just about the cap width, and you can see that if I lay it across there, it's uh, actually shorter. Uh, you've got your main woofer amplifiers, you've got your horn amplifiers, you've got some other resistors and things. All you have is this aluminum block, and that's all they screw it to. That is that is your problem. I mean, you know, you don't really have QSC and, and Mackie. They at least do give you a big old giant heat sink on the back of the unit uh, to help disperse the heat where these heat sinks are going to. This, however, doesn't go anywhere. This 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 is bolted inside the case. Uh, it uses the front the aluminum case that it bolts to as it tries to actually get the uh, the heat out of it, um, but. Uh, However, it just it can't do it because there's just not enough, not enough uh, 
room. So you can see it's a very simple system. Uh, that just a big block of aluminum. These things here, these are the capacitors. These are the things that make it able to produce a lot of bass. And you can see that these capacitors are tiny. Uh, the larger the capacitor, the more ability it has to handle surges and power. Uh, all the rest of the everything is, is you know, just very fine microelectronics and stuff like that. Uh, you can see the speaker wires here. Uh, the speaker wires are very thin. I would say that these are probably 18 gauge speaker wires. So, you know, most uh, most people sit there. I mean, this is stuff you'd run in your car. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and then here's your other wires here. So, uh, anyway, that's a, that's a basic, uh, actually, yeah, that's right. So then, then you've got your power input here, and your power input screws in, you know, just snaps in here. So if you look at the actual amount of contact, I mean, you can see that the pins for the power is just really microscopic. Um, my basic thing on these speakers, I think they're overpriced for what they are, especially being in them. I don't think they last. And, uh... I think if you're going for active versus passive speakers, I think you should take a look around. Thanks very much for watching, and have a